Let's make a bucket hat together. <laughs> One of my very popular products when I had my retail store was, were, my bucket hats. They are fully reversible, so you can wear them either way. Two hats for one, which is such a steal. And it has been so long since I made one, since I put all of my sewing stuff in storage for so long. So let's see if it is truly like riding a bike and we can just pick up right where we left off. If you want to follow along and make your own bucket hat with me, you will just need a pattern, an iron, an ironing board, a sewing machine, and a serger if you want but is not necessary. My two fabrics today will be this beautiful blue printed. I like to typically do a little bit of an upholstery so it gives it a little more structure. But it doesn't have to be at least one side usually is pretty helpful i also like to do one side usually printed and the other side with a solid color that way if you're feeling a little more outgoing you do the printed if you're feeling a little bit more muted you have a solid color this will be done with a white thread mostly because i am short on colors at this moment but i think it would also look really beautiful with a nice shade of blue to kind of match either one of these but we're doing white and the first thing we're going to need to do is cut our pattern pieces cutting your fabric pieces on the floor is not always the most ideal thing to do however we are in a small apartment with no kitchen table and very little counter space so the floor it is for us today <laughs> also on the floor is press our fabric so that it's nice and not wrinkly in any way. Now that we are back at our sewing machine is we are going to take the pieces that are each the same length and we are going to stitch them right sides together and doing a little bit of a seam allowance on this edge because we're going to press these open. that we have all of our pieces stitched together we've still got our two main circles we're going to take this over to our ironing board and we're going to press these seams open flat so I'm going to head over there and do that real quick and I'll be right back this is also a great time for a pressing ham this is great for anything with a curve so these have a little bit of a curve on them since they will sit on our head it's also great for any garment making just a really nice thing to have in your sewing kit we now have all of our seams pressed flat they should look like this we are going to start constructing each piece of the hat this is a great time to use clips, but I have misplaced all of my clips, so we will be using traditional pins, and I will start pinning the smaller piece in first to right sides together, like this, and I will get pinning them around and show you how they look. I now have my two pieces pinned right side together. I typically start on each side at each seam and then one on each side here. A tip when sewing with pins, you never want to sew over your pins as you'll risk breaking your needle. So as you sew, you'll just want to pull your pin out. But we're going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around this and get these pieces connected. we have finished that we can leave this raw edge or we can use a serger on it however it will be enclosed inside of the hat so I usually just kind of leave it as it is but you can start to see the shape taking place as we flip this inside out this is the top of the hat so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the next piece of the same fabric and we're going to do the same thing over again we're going to do right sides together so lining up these seams kind of using them as our notch 
we're going to pin that and then top stitch this around as well. So I will meet you on the other side of this step. Now that I've got those pieces all stitched together, you can already see one side of the bucket hat and just like that, look at that beautiful. I typically do like to go in and press this top seam again using my um, pressing hand just to give it a really clean look, but that is optional. It is pretty difficult to get in and press this seam up here, so I don't usually do that, but I am going to go ahead, press the seam. We're going to repeat these steps with this side of the bucket hat, and then I will meet you back. We now have both of our pieces. They should look like this and I did press the seam so you can see the last step in putting the two pieces together is to make them again right sides together so turning one inside out if you are using denim on one side it is sometimes fun to do them right sides together and leave a raw hem because it will kind of age over time however with these fabrics I will not be doing that so I will be tucking one inside of the other just like this and again lining up our side seams so making sure these two pieces match up and pinning them same on this side and then i usually do one on each side the key here is we will do a top stitch but leave a gap so that we can flip it inside out so i will show you how i do that when i get to the end and then we will be kind of doing our final finishing touches and just like that we'll have a bucket hat you will see that they fit quite snugly together. So I'm going to go ahead and move you back down to the sewing machine and we're gonna to get to doing our stitch again, leaving that gap so we can flip it inside out. got our two pieces together we've got our opening left because these get a little bulky I do sometimes like to trim these cornered edges down just a little bit and then we are going to flip this inside out take it back over to the iron if you're using a fabric that frays really easily on the edges this could have been a nice time to have pre-surged the edges but as we do this, we're just going to be kind of gentle and just slowly start pulling our hat through. Now that we are pulled through, we are going to start kind of tucking one end, one color under the other and just pulling until we start to find this seam. Once we do this, we're going to take it back over to our iron. We're going to press this seam here, tucking our raw edges in and ironing them down. All right, we are coming up on our last step, which is our top stitch. You would definitely need to do at least one top stitch to close this open edge here. However, I typically do about three up using the width of my presser foot all the way around, doing one loop, stopping, trimming the thread, and doing another. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll show you the final product. Okay, she's finished. I did just two stitches around the edge this time. You can really go as far up as you want to. It becomes a personal preference. However, it's really great because there is no front, no back, and you can wear it either way. So let's put our hair down, step into the sun, and try it on.